Superfans are something that every brand wants. The people that recommend your services, products and courses whenever someone has a problem. But creating that natural and loyal following isn't an overnight process. It takes time. Time cultivating relationships right from the first impression. And we only ever get one chance to make a first impression count. So it's crucial that we get it right every time. In this episode, I'm joined by Matt Barnett, who is the founder and also known as Papa Bear of Bonjuro, the video messaging and loyalty platform. Matt's love of building great products is only surpassed by that of building great culture. And his goal is to be the next Sapos, to be the most loved brand in the world. Welcome to Bloggers Creating Courses, the podcast which will take you behind the scenes of creating an online course. I'm your host, Verity Songon, founder and education consultant of veritysongon.com. I'm so excited to help you create an online course that you are proud of and to be part of your journey to scale your business as an online course creator. Let's get into the episode. So Matt, I am so excited to have you to have you here with us on the podcast today. We are going to be diving into some really exciting topics, but we're going to be talking mainly about creating super fans. And I love this idea of creating super fans around your brand and around your course, which is going to be the main topic of our episode today. But before we dive in, I want to hand over to you. Um, tell us who you are, what it is that you do, and most importantly, why on your website is everybody dressed up as a bear? So my name's Matt. I'm the uh, CEO or Papa Bear at a company called Bonjour, uh, based out of Australia. Uh, and then the UK states were all dotted around. Uh, we basically do, a, we started off with a video email platform uh, that we built to scratch one of our own itches. And now we've just launched a testimonials product and we're starting to go down the wonderful world of, of true customer loyalty. Um, but in terms of the bears, we are quite a fun brand. Uh, logo is a bear and it's kind of got a little bit out of hand <laughs> he's probably the best way to explain it but uh yeah it's uh it's part of the joys of, of growing business for us you can you can do whatever you want and get away with it absolutely i loved it i thought it was brilliant i went onto your website and i was like everyone's dressed off as a bear i love this branding this is just oh, i thought it was brilliant i really did Anyway, it kind of leads into our points today of what we're going to talk about in this episode there. So one of the first questions I want to ask around this idea of creating super fans is how do you build relationships as you build your brand? Because we all want to have relationships with our clients. So how do we go about building these relationships? Yeah. So like, I think like relationships have to come from a bit of a human connection. Uh, and I guess the question you always kind of talk about is like, how do you build relationships and how, and how do you scale a business? Yeah, there's always two sides. Like, if you're if you're getting started, like one luxury that you have is a little bit more time, and like every customer matters. Like as you grow, you start to look at how to scale this. But I think you have to invest in your customers for them to invest in you. Uh, I think it's like like there always has to be human interaction as part of that conversation. And again, like as you get to know someone more and more, that you know you can start to check in like on mass. But at the beginning, check in for thirty seconds. Every every new customer you get, take take thirty seconds with them. Um, it's not a lot a lot of time. Um, depending what industry you're in, depending what you're doing, spend more or less, um, but just be willing to give in order to get back, I think. But I think that's so important. I love what you say about only taking 30 seconds or so, because it doesn't take that long to send a message to somebody or DM them or what have you. And quite usually when you're starting up your brand, very rarely do you have like 10,000 people immediately yeah, just swarm exactly. to your brand. So if you're starting out with, you know, five, 10 people, five, 10 customers or potential students to your course. Yeah. Like you said, just take that 30 seconds. That's like what, 10 minutes of your week just to start building up those relationships and asking people where they want to go in what direction they want yeah. and what they want to see from your brand and how you could potentially help them as well. You get a lot more back. You get a lot more back from talking to customers than I think even they do. Mm-hmm. So we saw this today, like, yeah, like we, so we, we have a video message, message business where every sign up we still get today our team still sends every single person a, a, a personalized welcome video uh, and we do it now by splitting it for our team I, I still do probably tw- tw- 20 a day and people are like wow i can't believe you still do this and i'm like oh this is this is all to help me because by having a finger on the pulse of our customers and talking to to a subset of them i like i will make better better product decisions i'll be like oh hey what while i've got you 
can you check out this this, this new positioning piece or this new product and like idea we have? And so I'll constantly be, be trying to get feedback and to improve the business. Um, and so we'll use our customers like all the time. So again, like, like I, I always say to them, it's not about like, although we do it to make you feel good, the benefit is for us because the more of you that talk to us, the, the, yeah, the less chance of us going the wrong, the better decisions we'll make, the better positioning we'll do, the better channels we'll understand, the more we'll understand you to sell to you. So it, it all benefits you as a company. Again, if you, if, you talk, if you build in isolation, you know, if you just build it, like your customers won't come, you have to talk to people. So you get as much out of it as you put in. Definitely. And you're getting all that data, aren't you? You're finding out exactly. and you're just getting so much data that you can just plow back into your product, into your service, into your business, which, as you said, that's just going to benefit you and also ultimately your customers in the long run. You're starting that process for building up those super fans because people are going to be more interested if you're engaging with them than if you're just this cold face of a photo that's hiding behind a website, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah, and I, I mean, if you talk about kind of super fans and you look at like why you want to get people to that stage and, and it's a journey. No one's a super fan on day one. Yeah. Like the, there's two real pieces that, that, that come out of this and why I do it, like just jumping a little bit ahead. On the one hand, if someone's a super fan, they're going to stay with you longer as a company and they're going to give you more chances. And when you first start, yeah, I think about our, our first product was was awful, but it kind of like worked a little bit. And people were like, look, we know it's terrible, but we get it. We like it. You know, keep building and, and we'll stay here for the long term. Um, mm-hmm. so people will stay with you longer. Obviously, obviously, they stay with you longer than they'll spend more, more money, be that buying more courses or more products or spending more with you as a consultant. On the other hand, again, if someone's a super fan, they'll also, go, they'll also go and talk about you more. So they'll go and become a growth channel. So they'll tell their friends about you, they'll tell colleagues. They'll leave you reviews, they'll do testimonials. And then, as we said earlier, also do like product feedback. We really like yeah. to build these because not only do you keep the long run, that's awesome, but they should be getting you new business as well. The amazing part. And if you get that to work, you know, ultimately you can get to a stage where your business grows itself without having to go and invest in any external channels. Absolutely. And I think that the immediate example which springs to mind is the Stupid Simple SEO course. And Mike Fuchia has just just smiled. You've clearly heard of it. Everybody's heard of this course. But, you know, he's he's quite um, almost famous for saying that he doesn't plug into, you know, growing on social media and putting things out on social media because he has got his super fans. He's got people that you go in the Facebook groups. People say, I need some help. I need to learn about SEO. And people go, oh, go check out Stupid Simple SEO. It, it, it he's it's free advertising essentially because as you said he's done these steps to work through relationship growth and build up and build up his brand which is which is great for him because he's actually just launched a new product and I saw everybody was kind of advertising it for him and I thought yeah. well how, hang on what's what's this all about you've clearly like you know hit um hit the kind of you know magic source here so to so to speak so how would you suggest people go about creating super fans for their brands. We've already talked about that interaction, yeah. but anything else that you can, um, you can kind of give us some advice there. Yeah. Like, like, on one caveat, you know, with people like him or your Pat Flynn's or the people who, who get to the scale. Yeah. Like one thing I will say is like, this is not an overnight success. I think you will have super fans from, from, from day one, but when you get to his scale, he's actually been doing this consistently for a long time. Yes. And so I think, what, what, one, thing, one thing that needs to run through this is that when you start to, to behave this way and work with customers, this isn't something you do when you're small and you drop it when you get big. No matter how big you get, you consistently look after your customers and you do this through, through, through team and through scale, whatever else, um, and it will grow with you. But in terms of, of, of tactical, ta- tactical ways, I think if you look at the kind of customer journey, like the best thing to do is to get a piece of paper, and write down your customer journey and write down all the touch points that you may or may not have with those customers. Now, you don't want to go over the top, but there's certain ones that are very important. So I think like the most important one is first impressions. So you ultimately get one example, one chance to make your best first impression with a customer. Um, and that is you, your team, or your brand that comes across. Make that amazing. Now, that doesn't have to be complex. Again, it could be a video that you send through to them. It could be turning up in their office, bringing them coffee, you know, if you're still old school and go that way. It could be, you know. Work up tea. It could be the first <laughs> email. Could be the first email, like, like, like I, I used to, I, I used to go to the UK for sales and be like, I'll turn up with a cup of tea or coffee, and everyone always went for tea. And I was like, this is great. Um, it could be the first email that you send. It could be the first product they get delivered has something in the box with it that is personalised, like a handwritten note, etc. 
I think what you want to do is you want to have the first ever ever impression with your brand, with your brand to make them stop, like a notice, because most interactions we do in the world, I can't remember how many it's like like what seventy interactions a day with different brands that we see out there. Most of those just get ciphered away, and we're kind of blind to them, and we're kind of numb to them. So the standout in that is is amazing, and it's not it's not that hard to do. Again, like most brands don't take the time. So if you can do something like say get on the phone, turn up in person, send a video, do something unique, you've got their attention. And if that first interaction is delightful and it is you know personal, then their then their impression is that that's the kind of company that they are entering into. And goes from that point. So back back to your piece of paper. Start to look at look at look at the other touch points you know that you have with this person. Now, if you're doing a course, it's going to potentially be, you know, they might download a taster of the course, and then when they get to a certain point, then you're looking to charge them for that, or have a subscription, um, or potentially give away you know one asset for free, and then you're looking to do like the full course as a paid item. When they hit that next point again, this is another touch point to come in, and you know. I guess, hold their hand onto that next journey and show that you're there. Courses are amazing, by the way, because you have something that no one else has, which is like you have this, this point of authority. I mean, I mean, like education as a whole, you have this, yeah? So like you're not an unknown face. You are the educator. You are the author. You are the superstar. So like I look at my business where like with software, no one necessarily knows who the people are behind the scene building it. It's like, oh, the face is the software in the company. Whereas as an educator, you actually the person. So if you get in touch with a person or you take time to respond to a tweet or message them, you, you also carry a bit of like authority, and, you know, like a little bit of like giddiness. Yeah. Because you're like, they're like, oh, wow. You know, Verity actually took time to say, to say hi to me and, and suggest these things. Um, so I, I, I would use that to your unfair advantage. And again, at these points where maybe you're trying to push someone over into the conversion stage or they just come on board, this is a stage that you go and invest a little bit more again. Yeah. And as your funnel, you know, as your funnel shrinks, you know, as you get like lots of interest, you know, fewer customers, fewer, like invest more time as you come, as you come down the funnel, obviously. Um, the next part, again, keep, keep drawing a paper and then how it goes. I think the next part is to really to look at where you get subsequent, subsequent payment engagement, I guess, like retention. Um, again, that might be on selling onto your next course, or it might be, Hey, have a, have a, a, a subscription. You can have our courses for a year. It might be that you release a new course in six months time. This is next time to look to re-engage that user. And if you're going to do something, don't just come in cold, like lead up to it. So engage the user, you know, for a couple of days or, or a couple of periods up to that moment. So they know it's coming. And again, take the time. And again, look at your different customer base and what you charge and, 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 and where you sit and what stage of business you are. These, you might put more or less time into these. Um, again, if you have a few customers, just put all the time in the world. You know, sometimes like, sometimes turning up in person, if you've got, you know, if you've got 10 customers and they're all, you know, and three of them are in your city, pop in with the coffee and chat to them about it, yeah? And ask what else they, they would want to read or what lessons are missing. Again, like, like users as an opportunity, do that. And then go, oh, do you mind if I have a testimony like off you? And they will, they will give you the most amazing one possible. Do you want to create an online course? Or do you have an online course in the works that you don't know how to finish? If you answer yes to either of these questions, then listen up as this one's for you. Through a mix of self-paced and live group coaching sessions, the Course Creator Mastermind combines my years of experience and qualifications and breaks them down into manageable bite-sized stages that will have you planning, creating and teaching your online course in just 12 weeks. I will teach you my three-step method to creating an online course that your students want to learn from. It's the method I've used to help business owners just like you scale to thousands of learners within months. Doors are now open for the next intake of this program. I only open this program three times a year, so grab your spot now at veritysongon.com slash mastermind. So like, like going back, map out the journey. First impressions absolutely matter. And then look at the net, the first purchase part. And then I think your second purchase point, those for me are the three that really count. Cause then you've got, you know, engagement, conversion, and then retention, which are how I think about the customer. Journey. I think that's so important. And I love how you mapped that out. And there's two points, which I put, um, which I kind of pulled out as you were talking there. The first one was 
about building up and don't expect that overnight success because yeah okay I mentioned Mike and mentioned a couple of other names there um but I think it's really easy in the digital space to kind of think hey this is what Amy Porterfield's doing this is what Melissa Griffin's yeah. doing and all and all these names but you raise such a valid point that they didn't start their businesses yesterday they started their businesses a few year, a good few years ago and they have been They've done the legwork. They've done, you know, they've worked with their teams to create these super fans. So I think that point that you made about building up and not expecting that kind of overnight success is so, so important because it takes time to build those relationships. And I think sometimes in our kind of social media driven world, we forget that it takes time to build up really good and authentic connections with with our customers and with our potential students and, you know, whoever's going to purchase or use our services there. And the other thing which I really liked that you said as well is about making that personal impression because it's so easy to just, you know, plug into our email platform and be like, here is the most standard template. Welcome to my newsletter, you know, email that you could possibly think of. (laughs) You know, it's so easy to get that kind of standard template and there's nothing wrong with standard templates. But as you said, if you're really looking at building up relationships, it's about that personal, that personal focus and, you know, and making that personal impression, because you're right, we do only have that one chance to make a first impression and to put people on that path to becoming our fans and our super fans and our customers and and all the rest of it. So I think that's really really key advice then I it's interesting because for everybody that I've interviewed on the podcast so far absolutely everybody has come back to this core message of don't expect overnight success the people who come up with that overnight success it's incredible it's either incredibly rare they've hit a unicorn or you what you haven't seen is the years of trial and error and relationship building that has gone in beforehand so I think it's really important that as I said nearly everybody who's come on this podcast has come back to exactly that same point of it just takes time and perseverance and hard work and and you know and all the rest of it and all the rest of it there so for our lovely listeners who are who are tuning into this episode who are at the start of their online course journey who are at the start of you know building their brand or um you know establishing their brand there what simple actions could they implement either today or this week to really start building relationships and turning a potential casual customer into a super fan yeah so like the one thing i'll say i am biased here but like it's it's worth a test anyway yeah it's obviously when you have downloads coming in for kind of course i guess kind of teasers or you've got leads coming in do send them a personal message on video like I think, especially if, if if you can do it numbers when you first start, so ten a day, three a day, just just try it, yeah. Because I think you'll be surprised at how much it'll jolt people out of their everyday piece. And again, you're the person who wrote the course; so they're reading your material. It's having an author, yeah? which again, which gives you a heads up. So I think you doing things in person is really important. I mean, to the extent, like I would say, like like I know people who've actually done this, like on social media, who have like followed them. And they reply to every single person that follows them on social media. Now the numbers there get, get can get big pretty quick. Yes, that's get slightly less sustainable. But the idea is when someone engages with you, an outside person, they can you your time. Do the same back. I think um, it's a really good place to start. Um, don't just do the generic email that goes out. Um, that's my kind of number one tip. I think video is a great way of just obviously connecting like in a human way. I think writing is wonderful. I'm not much of a writer myself. You may be amazing at it, but you're still going to miss 80% of, of, of kind of how you communicate because, you know, your tone of voice, your personality, your smile, the way the way you interact, it, that's the real you. And that's the bit that gets, gets across. And if you do use video, the one thing I'll say is like, don't, it's not about getting an amazing camera setup. You don't need perfect lighting. That stuff almost makes it worse in a way. I think what you want, and the best thing to use actually is just to use a smartphone. So if you have this device with you, this obviously has become a very personal device. We're very comfortable with this. If you walk out in your garden or in your kitchen or you know with your kids or in the office, we'll obviously tailor it to your brand. If you're a legal, if you're a legal course, maybe don't do it in the garden with the dogs. But I think tell it to your brand, use it. It will come across very natural and authentic. And you want it to be a little bit scrappy because then people know it's real. 
This is the other side, yeah? So if you use video on that other side, look, look, look at the other end, like, like if, if your courses are extremely in depth and more expensive, I would say potentially get on a call with people. Obviously, there's a larger time investment there, but again, be willing to take the time with them. And as you're just starting out, you might find that you get two yeses for every eight no's, but you'll, you'll learn a lot like very, very quickly, yeah? So again, I think, again, depending like your price and kind of where you sit, try and use some like video to connect with that person or even go in person, you know, in the early days. I remember like our, our early days when we first built the product, I probably did a hundred meetings in person here in Sydney. And we talked to everyone, you know, from like your PWCs and EYs to universities, to charities, to solopreneurs, to SMBs, to SaaS companies. Um, and we very quickly worked out who our customers were and where things didn't work. But everyone who came in were like, oh, can we, can we get you coffee? Can we get you coffee? And it, and it was exhausting and we don't do it now, but in those early days, we wouldn't have the company we, we, we have today if we hadn't done that. The biggest thing that you said there, which I just absolutely loved, was you don't need to get bogged down with this amazing tech setup. I was talking to somebody just recently and they said, you know, I don't have an amazing camera. I said, but I'm talking to you. We're having a video conversation right now on the internet. I said, so you've got a video recorder. Yeah, but it's only the one that's in my laptop. I said, so it's fine. Yeah. Your, your laptop comes with a microphone and a camera. Use it. It doesn't matter that you don't have, you know, this, you know, so many videos. And actually I was watching a YouTube video Excuse this tangent, but it, it, it is relevant. I, was, I don't know if you're aware, there's a YouTuber called Alicia Marie, and she is absolutely huge. She's got millions and millions of, of, of followers and is worth, I don't know how much money. But she did a YouTube video a while ago where she got her dining room table or a massive table, and she literally laid out all of this tech equipment. And it was just camera and camera and microphone and boom arm. It, it just, it went on and on and on for days, it felt. But then she turned around and she made the very real point. And she said, I didn't start out with any of this. She said, I started out with literally the most basic camera and the most basic microphone on my computer. And I built all of this up over a however many year career. And that was so, so sobering because I think we do kind of get lost in this. Oh, but I can't record a video because I need the best microphone and I need the most high tech and high spec 4K, 5K video camera and all this kind of thing. It's like, no, laptops and smartphones, just choose what you've just choose what you've got. Nobody's on like a Nokia 3310 anymore or very few people are with like, you know, those really grainy images. So just use what you've got. I think that's so important because, as you said, we've nearly all got smartphones and laptops and stuff. So be economical and use what you've got, particularly right at the beginning. People say, like, you heard the term, like, content is king. Mm -hmm. Like, content is more important than the media used to get the content in the first place. If you don't have the content, you have the best camera in the world with with rubbish content. It's not going anywhere, yeah? Yeah. Um, Like, um, um, and the authenticity. there's There's a part which is, like, trust and authenticity here as well. Like I said, yeah. it's sometimes in your favor to be less high production because people trust that more because they're like, oh, no, this is not some polished salesperson. You know, this is not a car sales guy. This is the, this is the, the, the carpenter who turns up covered in wood chips, but, but you know, he's, but you know he's, he's obviously a worker and he's been doing that all day. So he can probably do his job. I think that matters. Definitely. It, like you said, it just it comes back to that authenticity and that that real desire from inside you to want to build the relationships and the connections. I think that's such an important message and takeaway. Well, Matt, we have covered so, so much in this call. I think it's been absolutely fantastic and so, so valuable for our listeners as well. So thank you so much for being, for being with us today. Before we go, please tell us where can people catch up with you, find out more about the Bonjoro app. Um, We'll obviously have all of the links down in the show notes, but please, um, please tell us, where we can catch up with you before we go. Personally, if you want any advice or want some help or have any thoughts, uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn. If you type in Papa Bear, there's two of us. I'm the, I'm the one in the bear suit. Uh, I had a lot of help getting where I am today. So please hit me up and feel free to, to grill me and, uh, and, and to push me for advice. Um, otherwise, bonjour.com. If you want to try videos, check it out. Have some fun with it. Play around. It's free, free to use. Uh, if it works for you, uh, that's awesome. And if we can help, then just let us know again. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I've had a lot of fun and I've learned a lot as well. So I'm sure our listeners will have learned loads too. So thank you. No problem, Verity. Thanks for having me. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Bloggers Creating Courses. 
If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, leave a rating and a review. Ratings and reviews help us to reach more people who want to build and scale their online course. So you're really helping to widen the support for our blogging community. To catch all of the latest from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Verity Songon. I'll see you next time. Happy content creating.